The purpose of this brief presentation is to help you to differentiate between head tossing behavior, which is usually pain induced, and what we call idiopathic trigeminal mediated head shaking behavior. Head tossing, as exhibited by this horse, is usually a manifestation of musculoskeletal pain and is often associated with a number of features of the ridden horse pain ethogram. This horse episodically tosses its head up and down. It is slightly restricted by the running martingale, but that is in place for the rider's safety. We can see that the head also moves a little bit from side to side. The horse lacks hind limb impulsion. There is a bilateral hind limb toe drag. The saddle doesn't fit particularly well, and we can see that it oscillates from side to side, more to the right than to the left. This is somewhat dependent on the diagonal on which the rider sits. This head tossing behavior was consistently worse on the left rein compared with the right rein. And we can see that the horse did a little skip there in front, elevating its forelimbs. This was a consistent feature on a day to day basis. It didn't really vary in severity from day to day and was not altered by the environmental conditions, whether it was sunny or overcast. We will see that the horse is rather reluctant to establish and maintain canter. The rider cannot maintain canter at all when sitting in the saddle in a three-point position. The only way in which she can establish and maintain canter is by being in a two-point position. We can see that the head tossing behavior is worse in canter than in trot. And this was also a consistent feature with this horse. That is not particularly typical of head shaking behavior. Although the horse's head does move from side to side at times, it shows none of the kind of twitching that we often observe in a horse with idiopathic trigeminal mediated head shaking behavior. We will see that the canter on the left rein is worse than on the right rein. And this was also a consistent feature. So canter is worse than trot and that would not be typical of a horse with head shaking behavior and makes me think that this is probably pain induced. And in fact, this horse had primary sacroiliac joint region pain. And we're going to see the difference in this horse's quality of movement and in its behavior after we remove that pain. So this is after infiltration of mepivacaine or local anesthetic solution around the left and right sacroiliac joint regions. We used 8 ml per side and this is approximately 15 minutes later and we can see an enormous improvement. The head position is not entirely stable but this is very substantially better. The horse is much more willing, it has increased range of motion of the thoracolumbosacral region or the back, and this is reflected by a swing of the tail. The horse moves with better hind limb impulsion. There is a reduced hind limb toe drag. The horse is straighter. There is a better quality contact via the reins to the bit, and the horse is much more rideable and much more comfortable for the rider. We can see that the rider is able to maintain canter now sitting in a three point position. And the ease with which she can ride the horse is reflected by her own facial expression. She looks much happier. 
The horse does still occasionally have a head toss, but it can be ridden through it and the horse is not trying to break back spontaneously to trot. This is occurring more frequently on the left rein. Remember, the left rein was worse than the right rein initially, but still the rider can sit and ride through it. And this got consistently better and better the longer the rider continued in canter. The horse is still somewhat on the forehand in canter, but the change from before and after the nerve block is enormous. So clearly we have identified the primary problem, lumbosacroiliac joint region pain. This pony is a 17 year old Connemara cross thoroughbred gelding, which has been in the owner's possession for six years. It had a sudden onset of head shaking behavior two months previously. This pony was worst at rest immediately after exercise. So this pony has been lunged for approximately 15 minutes and you can see it is repeatedly shaking its head. It wants to rub its nose on its front limbs. Uh, and despite what the handler does to try and stop it, she can't really prevent this behavior. And sometimes affected animals will strike out with a forelimb at the nose. They will often make an abnormal respiratory noise during exercise. Now on the right, we see the same pony after infraorbital nerve blocks. And we can see that the pony is standing normally. It's interested in its surroundings. Its ears are forward. There's no head shaking at all. There's no tendency to strike the forelimbs or rub the nose. The infraorbital nerve block is done by inserting a long spinal needle uh, from just below the zygomatic arch in front of the temporomandibular joint, uh, rostrally and towards the midline. And we do this bilaterally, injecting 5 ml of mepivacaine per side. And then we generally assess horses at 30, 60 and 90 minutes after injection. This pony was completely normal within 15 minutes and remained normal for the following two and a half hours. So this is a pretty good way of diagnosing the likely presence of trigeminal nerve mediated uh, head shaking behavior. The block is not entirely specific. It could influence a painful tooth root, but it is a pretty reliable indicator in my experience. This technique was first described by Veronica Roberts. We mustn't forget the obvious. This pony is showing very similar behavior to the first horse. It's tossing its head up and down. It's a little bit reluctant to turn to the right, um, elevated the forehand there, swishing its tail, ears back. Never looks like a comfortable pony. And this is the same pony and the only intervention that I've made is to move the saddle backwards. And we can see that the pony's ridden behavior is completely transformed. The head and neck position is much more stable. The pony moves with a greater range of motion of the thoracolumbosacral region and therefore can step under better from behind. And there is an enormous immediate change. So my take home messages are head tossers are usually only evident during ridden exercise, although head shakers may exhibit their behavior either at rest, in a stable or in a field, in hand, 
on the lunge or ridden, or again at rest after exercise. In horses with pain related head tossing behavior, there are frequently other behaviors of the ridden horse pain ethogram, which are evident, reflecting pain. There's usually up and down movement of the head with or without side to side movement. There is usually no twitching of the head. And it's also important to rule out other potential secondary causes of pain, such as an ill fitting saddle or, of course, oral pain or bit pain or pain induced by a bridle.